Uh, my name is Jeremy Newton. I'm the Chief Executive of the Prince's Foundation for Children and the Arts. The Prince of Wales set the foundation up because of his own particular memories of being taken to museums, galleries and performances when he was a child, particularly by his, by his grandmother, the Queen Mother. Um, and he was conscious that a lot of parents don't take their children to galleries and the theatre. A lot of schools aren't able to. Uh, and he was very keen to set up an organisation that would help that to happen, encourage schools to build links with their local galleries uh, and to take their children to, to those galleries frequently. The Art in Action project that we ran here was funded by the Prince's Foundation for Children and the Arts as part of the START programme of funding. Um, what were the aims of that particular funding that came from Children and the Arts? Primarily it is about helping arts organisations, cultural venues like the Fitzwilliam to build strong, lasting relationships with schools in their, in their catchment area. Uh, it's helping them to not just encourage the one-off school visit, mm. but to encourage a continuing relationship so that the professionals work together, the professional teachers and the professionals within the museum, and so that the children begin to feel a sense of relationship to yes. the museum and to, the, to, to their local gallery. The Art in Action project took place at the Fitzwilliam Museum over three years, from 2006 to 2009. The project aimed to bring children to the museum who had never visited before, and to enable them to experience the Fitzwilliams collection for themselves. It also aimed to build long-term partnerships with the schools to encourage creativity and curriculum enrichment. The project involved over 400 children from six primary schools. During the project, both the children and their teachers were encouraged to engage with the objects in the collection and to create their own work in the museum's education studio. In November 2008, Children from St Mary's Church of England Primary School visited the Fitzwilliam Museum as part of the Art in Action project. During their visit, the children explored paintings in the gallery with a museum teacher. They looked at 14th century Italian altarpieces, discussed how and why the paintings had been made, and then did sketches of details from the paintings. Then they worked with an artist in the education studio to create their own paint and paintings on wood panels. This year, when I went, I deliberately didn't plan in advance because I just knew I had to sort of sit back and watch what yes. would capture their attention. And astonishingly, it was a little tiny blue rock, the lapis lazuli rock, yeah. that the artist showed us. And um, the, the children were just amazed that this was more precious than gold. They couldn't get over this, that this was more precious than gold. And this is why it was always used to paint Mary's robes in the pictures. Yes, yeah. And so when we came back, that's what they were obsessed by. So we'll show you later on. We yes, made our own rocks. Yes, so yes. we created our own lapis lazuli. We created a whole artist studio in our, our classroom. Mm -hmm. And we then went on from there being medieval artists. And... I couldn't have predicted that. So then it, it spilt over into literacy and poetry writing and tracking this rock. We've got map work where we found that rocks came from Afghanistan and we looked at its journey. So again, it was quite astonishing that the thing, of all the things in the museum, what really captured their, their attention um, was this little blue rock. But so, also, what, just hearing you talk there, what strong evidence that is for people who say, oh, we can't work in that way because we're not covering our... You know, the, the children led that. They, mm, they determined where you, mm. where you went with their interest and yes. enthusiasm. They determined the content, you see, but I... You're I, thinking... You can is, tweak the vehicle. Yes, yes of course, you, right, then, yes. you then said, well, yes. I, see the, I see the geography yes. potential, I see mm. the history and so forth. Mm. And so you've had this all-embracing curriculum experience, mm. but still, A, it's creative. Mm. The children are able to take it where they want to go. That's great to hear. This is our poster about treasures, and we've been look. We, when we got there, we looked at loads of gold, and then we found out that lapis lazuli, this rock here, it, is more valuable than gold. Really? And we made our own lapis lazuli stones. 
And put them in gold boxes. Yeah, let's just put them back. Amazing. And then we make, and then these are our pretend left slashy rye stones. Yeah. And then this is us when we first arrived. Okay, what was the weather like? It was um, <laughs> a bit wet and a bit cloudy. Yeah. And then this is us looking at the paintings that the artist John had done. Yeah. And then this is us in the studio painting on wood. And then we made some poems. Yeah. And um, all about Lapis Lazuli and um, trips back from Afghanistan. And there are lots and lots of them, and there are some more. And we heard some of those on Thursday, didn't we? So we should write those out. Yeah. Well, it, at the beginning of lessons, we do this thing called Art Start, and it's all about pencil control, and we do different sorts of patterns with rulers and things like that, and shading and things. Oh, I can see, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you do that sort of like five to ten minutes before the lessons? Yeah. So tell me what that's got to do with this beautiful angel. Um, well, at the end of the trip, we got um, a bit of blue strip, each, because we'll be learning about lapis actually, yeah. and we made a pattern on the angels' strips, like for wings. You use gold, silver, and the blue. Mm, yeah. Okay. Wow. And the whole class is involved in doing that. Yeah. Well, I have to say that's absolutely stunning. Thank you very much. Well, when we started, obviously I was thinking of um, art objectives because we were going to an art gallery and then we linked in lots of history objectives from that. But the thing that's really amazed me is all the cross-curricular links we've been able to make. So I've just jotted some things down. We've done um, lots of literacy links. So children have written factual reports. Um, so we've been able to link in with the literacy uh, objectives and the literacy framework. We've also done some amazing creative writing, both poetry and uh, stories that we've written. We've developed the historical side in different ways with different groups, and that's something I'll talk about later, how each year has been completely different. Mm. We've linked in lots of art and design technology, as you'll see when we use the studio later on. And um, the chance to actually work in the museum and then work back at school, this sort of sandwich has been really effective. Yes, yeah. So when I sat down and looked at all the things we've done, we've actually covered a huge amount of the primary curriculum just through a few museum visits. I'm a, I'm a great fan for working outside the classroom, but it shouldn't be looked upon as the soft option. And I think, you know, to, to get the most out of learning outside the classroom, you've actually got to be prepared to adapt your plans when you come back into school. And that's been the case each time now, that different things have captured the children's imagination. And so you come back and you think, that's what they're really fascinated with. Yes. So how can I sort of tweak things and adjust plans to actually go with their enthusiasm? So you're aware of the big picture, the big yeah. framework, but you've really got to run with their enthusiasm So you've as actually well. managed to maintain quite a child-centred mm, approach, very, but, but still yeah. working within quite yes. major frameworks. That's in terms right. Of, of so you're constantly aware of everything that you need to cover in the term. But I think one of the successes in this school is that I've been given a huge amount of freedom as a professional to say, I'm actually going to push that aside and do that next term, and I'm going to bring this in this term because yeah. it fits really well. And uh, that has been, I think that's made it really meaningful for the children. Well, that's a joy to hear. But I mean, particularly, like you probably heard, you know, the Cambridge mm. Review has said that a lot of schools are doing precisely the opposite to mm. that. You know, I've got locked mm. into a... Mm. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. objective-driven, right. standards-driven yeah. uh, uh, yes. sort of um, conveyor belt on this. Yes. So it's great to hear that he's had yeah. some kind of release. I think the two things can kind of run side by side. You know, we're aware of the objectives we need to cover oh, of course, in yeah. the term, and we're obviously aware of that we need to raise standards. But I think if you can actually use the Fitzwilliam visit as a vehicle, <laughs> um, then you can capture the children's imagination and their enthusiasm then you're going to get much higher quality work coming well, from it. I mean, I... Lapis Lazuli, high on a jagged mountain of Afghanistan, about four million metres high, and getting a vast headache by the people above me. They have been hitting me with an object called a hammer. 
Finally, the person has stopped. I found out I was broken off the mountain and have been transported to a truck. Next, transported to a boat. After that, to a port and back onto a truck to Cambridge to the Fitzwilliams Museum to be sold to an artist. After that, they crushed me up and mixed me up with egg yolk and sand, then made into powder until I was being used for a painting and it was a lady called Mary. I was the blue paint for Mary's dress. I was being admired by the people below me. The children said I looked beautiful. I must have been famous. I must have been lucky to be on Mary's dress. We're working very, very hard on speaking and listening skills in this school and the whole thing of pupil voice. So, for example, this morning we just had the big conversation, which is cross-curricular conversations across the, the whole school. And I think over the last few years we've worked really hard at helping all the pupils in the school realise that if they've got something to say, people will listen. And I think that really came into its own in the Art in Action project. And for me, it was, a, it was just a real treat to be able to sit at the back of the group for once, rather than always being at the front. The teachers yeah. nearly always at the front, leading. I was at the back and I was able to watch, and to watch children in my class kind of responding to the questions and the deep thinking that was going on, the partner talk and the sharing. That was just wonderful, because for me, that was a chance to really assess the progress that we've made. And teachers very rarely get a chance to actually be at the back watching yeah, rather yeah, than front leading. Yeah. So, yes, I think uh, that was a fantastic thing to show how they how confident they have become yeah. and how they want to talk and share their ideas Great. in a supportive environment. Good. What kind of impact do you feel the museum experience had on your mo people's motivation to learn? Well, I think it's I think. That question's been answered really by a head teacher, but I think the main thing is the children felt they'd been chosen for something special, and that's very, very important in this school. Um, the, the children felt really special from day one. They felt really special when they arrived at the museum, the way in which they were talked to at the museum was very, very important, because there are a lot of people who don't know how to connect with children, and the museum staff, they just made us feel very welcome and very special because we've been chosen. So I think the children were very motivated from the moment they stepped into the building. And then I think the ongoing toing and froing, you know, we've been to the museum, uh, we had an artist come and work with us in the classroom, then we went back to the museum, then we've had Sarah come and view the work that we've done, then we've gone back to the museum again. And because we've been involved for three years, obviously we've had three or four different groups of children yeah. going through, but it's become part of the school kind of system now. You know, this is, oh, we've got the next link in the Fitzwilliam sort of story. So I think that is very, very motivating. It's very special. We've done uh, special assemblies to show it to parents. We've had open afternoons. We've had all kinds of things going on. So there's a, there's a sort of an ongoing thing of putting on our own exhibitions and inviting people yeah. to see us now as well. And is this correct, because it, it's interesting, research, I mean, some research we've been looking at um, in, in other Eastern Region museums mm. show that often the, the greatest benefits are for the, the, the extremes of ability, so mm. that the, the less able children really, really respond very, mm. very well to this, and often the most able children children really push, you know, push forward. But sometimes there's a bit of a, a slough in the middle. You just, I mean, it's, 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 it's very, a general. Yes, thing. It is. It is a general thing, and I think obviously, um, when you're teaching a very mixed ability class, you need to be constantly aware of the children at both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. But I think it's just as important to think about the the invisible children who are in yeah, the middle of the class, yeah. who are the middle ability, well-behaved children, who could disappear. And actually, some of the most amazing work we've had has come from those children who've just kind of come awake and yeah. got really involved in it. I, I feel that the whole class, I can hand on heart say that every single child has raised their game and has benefited from this. There's not one child... Um, in all of the classes I've brought to the Fitzwilliam who hasn't benefited. Right. Um, that's a fantastic thing to be able to say about, oh, it, about an educational project. Yes. Uh, so first of all, really, um, what aspects of the museum school partnership have proved to be most worthwhile? I think just uh, 
making the children so aware of what there is out there. And one of the, the biggest things for us is aspirations beyond the estate. Yeah. And uh, when we first were asked if we could take part in Art in Action, um, went round asking children who'd ever been to a museum or an art gallery, let alone the Fitzwilliam, and two children had been down the art shop, down the town, and that was sort of their understanding of it. Well, they're in a bit of a cultural desert here, really, and uh, the value of this has been enormous. The Fitzwilliam is now part of St Mary's Speak. You yes. know, children know exactly what we mean by the Fitzwilliam, yeah. and I think that the, the year falls now will be quite sad. That they, I mean, they won't know till they get there, but they won't be as part of it in year five as well. But of course they have had the opportunities yes, to yes, go. Older brothers and sisters I think will be passing on to younger brothers and sisters and we do know, we have heard families that have gone into Cambridge and made the most of I mean, it. Unexpected positive outcome. I mean, you, I'm sure you thought it was going to go well. And it, was, it was good for you to do. You wouldn't have participated. But was there any any really unexpected things that, that, that came out of? Oh, an work? awful lot. Um, the the way that certain children, and especially um, the first group that went, were not a very cultural group at all, and we were very concerned about behaviour, etc., mm -hmm. and they just switched onto it completely. In fact, Janet had been so worried that she'd asked me to accompany one of the groups because behaviour was so difficult, and they were outstanding, and from then on, they really took with it. The other fantastic thing was when they actually made some pots and they went back to the museum and saw them displayed, which made them feel part of it. I think they think they're part of the Fitzwilliam family. Oh, they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and can, they really yeah, did. Can I just go back to the behaviour issue? Because this is often the case whereby teachers sometimes feel they're taking a big risk, taking yeah, a potentially a troublesome risk. class out. Yeah. You know, you think, what are they going to be like? You know, yes. Particularly in a fairly stiff environment. Well, yes. it can appear to be a stiff environment. And often the children respond so positively. Is there any reason you can think why that might be? I mean... I'll put, you know, I'm sure you didn't threaten the children with death. We, did, we didn't you know, have to. Was, um, well, what I, was it about the, the music experience, you think, that, that, that gets them so absorbed in that way? I think, well, expectations, really, that people are prepared to let them be free amongst all these uh, very valuable things yeah. without going around, you know, with them tied, their arms tied down, you know, yes, that they yeah. were allowed to experiment. Wonderful input from staff yes. that really, really got them going straight away yes, yeah. and, and to be able to see so much more than just walking around and seeing a load of pictures, but really looking yes. deeply into it. How well do you think we've actually managed to fulfil those objectives? I would say 100%, and I don't often say 100%. <laughs> I really think this has been a complete success mm -hmm. in our school, and we've, we've sucked every opportunity yes, out evidently. of this. Um, and I think we've made it a really rich um, project for the children. And I think the Fitzsimmons yeah, staff are really pleased.